Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Super excited to be back with you with an episode. Today, I'm going to be talking about purpose, fulfillment, and accountability with my friend Agi Karamidas. Uh, Before we get into that, of course, I want to just take a moment and say thank you for everyone listening and read today's review, um, which I really loved. That's from That's What She Said, which love that. Thank you. Uh, I am childish, so I do appreciate things like that. Uh, It's titled, If You Want to Fix Yourself, Listen to This. Raw, emotional, powerful, and healing. Michael's willingness to share his past and how he went from a broken, abused child defined by his trauma to a successful, compassionate advocate and mentor for other survivors with his audience is fascinating. If you've ever been affected by any trauma, you need this show from that's what she said. Thank you for that. I really, truly appreciate it. You know, I I think we all have a really powerful ability to be the hero of our own story. And that comes entirely by making choices and decisions every single day that are about being in alignment with the person that you want to be, about facing your fear, about doing the work, learning, personal development, self-mastery, and ultimately stepping into a future that you have the ability to create. 
and that's very much part of the conversation that I have with, with Augie today. And I'm super excited to have this conversation with him because you look at people's lives sometimes and, and in passing you go, what have you ever done? That's incredible. And then you sit and you talk with them and that's not me being biased or, or judgmental, please. It's just more of like a general thing. And then you sit and you have a conversation with them and you go, man, that's so incredible. You face that fear. You made that decision. You put yourself in a path for your destiny. And that is admirable. And so my friends, super excited for this episode. Thank you, of course, for being here. Thank you for reviewing. Please go on iTunes, leave a review, tell people about the show, share it on social media, screenshot it. Let me know that you're listening. And without further ado, my friend, Augie Karamidas. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Welcome to the Think Unbroken podcast. I'm your host, Michael Unbroken, and this podcast is about helping trauma survivors let go of the past, overcome their fear, discover their identity, become the hero of their own story, and ultimately to be unbroken. Our goal in company is to bring on guests and experts in the fields of mental, physical, and psychological health to help you overcome the past, to take back your power. And in this podcast, we are unedited and unfiltered, and we're going to give it to you real so that you can start to create massive change in your life. If you're curious about learning more outside the podcast, you can get a free copy of my book, Think Unbroken, at book.thinkunbroken.com. That's book.thinkunbroken.com, where you can get a copy of my number one bestselling book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma. The most important thing that you can ever do, my friends, is show up for yourself, and that's where you are today. And I appreciate you. I have massive gratitude for you. And without further ado, let's get into the show. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. I'm very excited to be back with you with another episode with my guest, Agi Karamidas, who is the host of the Personal Development Mastery Podcast, and his mission is to influence and inspire people to stand out and take action towards the next level of their lives, which I'm all about. Augie, my friend, what is happening in your world today? How are you? It's great to be here, Michael. It's a real pleasure. And what is happening in my world? Well, the previous hour of my day, I was interviewing you for uh, my podcast. So <laughs> that is a really amazing uh, thing. So I- I'll keep my answer short. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And, and you know, this, this is such... A fun conversation for me. I'm very curious about you and your experience. Now, I know you spent a very long time as a dentist and, you know, what I'd love to do here is just for context to, to go yeah. back a little bit. Cause people are probably gonna be like, wow, how the hell did you go from a dentist to a podcast guy? Like, you know, so where I'd really love to start is why don't you start at the beginning? Tell us about your journey and, and how you got to where you are today. Yes, sure. So I'll use a, a, a short version. I think there have been two major switching uh, points or turning points in my life that make a big difference. One was when I moved from Greece, my home country, to England. And that was something that I did in my mid-30s, despite the external success that I had, I felt a a void inside me. Something was not right. And uh, eventually, I I had a calling about England and uh, it took me a while battling with uh, fears and insecurities but I you know left everything behind at some point my my job my family friends uh, fiance and started a new life in the UK so that was 11 years ago and that really started changing things very much uh, as a person I became much more uh, able to rely on myself because I was just on my own in a different country and uh, that changed me very much. Uh, I will take a little pause here, Michael, in case you want to uh, ask me anything before I tell you about the how do I went from dentist to the the podcasting. Yeah, no, man, go for it. We're we're in it with you. (laughs) So, yes, at some point, five, six years ago, Uh, I had just finished a a master's degree and instead of feeling my uh, really motivated, uh, wanting to pursue this kind of new knowledge and being able to do some really high tech stuff that I was learning, I felt really empty. 
I felt like I didn't know what was wrong. That's what I thought, that there is something wrong with me. But that led me to start looking for the answers inside myself. So I, I call it my personal development journey, which... Um, I got uh, some books. Uh, I got uh, a, a big, big uh, factor of my change was uh, Tony Robbins. And actually, when I went to his event in 2017, uh, that was when everything changed for me in terms of um, how I, I was looking at myself. And uh, I will explain what I mean by that, because all my life until... That day, actually, because uh, there was a major change that uh, happened uh, in a day. All my life until then, I was a very close person and introvert, very shy, very uncomfortable in social situations. You know, I would always stand on the corner and only speak with people I knew. And uh, when I went to that uh, event, I realized beyond any doubt that... This was not who I was. All, all, the, all the time, all along, I had believed that this is who I am. I'm just a shy person. But it was at that time that uh, I realized that it was a behavior. It was not who I was. It was something I kept on doing habitually. And that was because of a limiting belief that I had that I'd never realized or articulated before, but it became very clear to me on that day. And that limiting belief was like a, you know, a little voice that uh, playing at the back of my head. And it was telling me that, Aggie, people are not interested in what you have to say. And it was on that day, on that occasion, that it, that became so clear to me. And of course, uh, I realized that if I carried on having this uh, limiting belief, you know, I projected, and that's how what Tony Robbins does in, in that event. It's, it's brilliant. Projects your life into the future if nothing changes. And then you look back at your life and uh, you realize that <laughs> this was such a, a waste. I could have done so many things and I didn't. And that was what uh, really triggered my radical change then i went into more and more personal development uh, you know coaching all these uh, sorts of things and very quickly i went from and i mean in uh, literally a few months i i did my first public speech from <laughs> so i turned things around and not about a year afterwards i started my first podcast so uh, that was <laughs> i'm i'm trying to to uh, to keep it concise for the moment, but if if you want me to, if you want to discuss on any of that in more detail, yeah, you know, me. so a you can go as long as you'd like. This is our opportunity sure. to go deep and hopefully bring a lesson to folks listening. Um, the thing that came to mind for me immediately, what I thought was really interesting is, so here you are in this position that eleven years ago you decide to pick up your life and go to the UK, face mm -hmm. this fear, step into this like realization you want to have. And yet you were still kind of stuck. What I, what I think happens for people all the time is they get to this place where they, they take a change, they make a change and they expect things to be totally different, but then they're actually really not because they're still consumed with not only their limiting beliefs, but also the behaviors and the circumstances that they put themselves in. What I'm curious about is, so I know right now there are people listening and I've had this experience myself where we face a fear. We make that decision. We we go down this path of doing the thing we feel like we should do. And then yet we're still stuck. There's your 60% into whatever is it you're trying to figure out. What was happening in that space between that move and that moment at Tony Robbins where you still felt kind of like this, this emptiness that you were trying to find and discover? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that inevitably we will get stuck in a way further down the line because we don't know what's going to to, to happen. Uh, so we do progress, we face a fear, and that's how it felt to me. And then uh, I moved to the UK, I did the things, I really increased my confidence. But, and what you what you were saying earlier 
it made me think that no matter what is happening on the outside of your life, your external circumstances, the person that you are inside is really what's going to determine how you perceive all that outside. So you can be in the best place in the world, but if you feel bad inside of you, it, it's not going to make that uh, place look the way that it is. So moving to a different country or doing something different uh, will not prevent you from getting stuck again if, if there is something inside of you and there is usually if not always there is something inside you that causes that so you just take that to a different setting but at some point you will need to face it so in answer to your question i'm not sure if it was the same thing that um, caused me to be stuck one the first time and the second i think it to some extent it was the same thing and that uh, maybe is that that deeper need to live a fulfilled life and really do you know fulfill your potential and do the most with the time that uh, you're given uh, so yeah, I went on a, a, a nice uh, high, getting unstuck after that, moving to, to the UK. And then at some point, I realized that this on its own was not enough. There was much more for me to do uh, and be in order to um, you know, feel that sense of uh, fulfillment or feeling unstuck or moving, uh, moving on. So, yeah, yeah that's... Here's what I think about quite frequently. Fulfillment to me feels like the ultimate accomplishment. And what I mean by that is you can chase so many things like money, career, trying to have the best podcast in the world, whatever, right? And in that still feel empty, feel mm. narrow, feel unaccepted by yourself first and foremost. And that all ultimately I think becomes a reflection of, of the outside world. Yeah. What I think people often struggle with is they're always seeking their purpose. I don't particularly think about life like that. I don't think about seeking my purpose. I instead think about seeking fulfillment. And, and I love that you use that word a couple of times. So when you're in this transition and you're trying to figure out what's next, was there was there a light bulb moment? Was there something that really struck a chord with you where you're like, this is the thing I need to do? Like, how do you arrive to this place where you start chasing fulfillment, even within the chaos of trying to figure out who you are? I think what you said about the, the purpose, uh, that's, and I went into, I had, I made the same mistake myself. And I think many people do that. They're trying to find it, but it's no, nowhere to be found. It's not waiting for you to, uh, to find it. You have to create it. That's how I, I see the, the, the purpose and uh, the, the path of, of our life, really. We have to create like or compose it like a, like a song, like a poem. It's, uh, it's not there and you look around to find it. And the only way to create and compose it like that is by taking the next uh, thing. So it's similar to what you said. That it's not like I knew that five or ten years from now I would really want to be that or have that vision of my life as such. But I did the next step. I took the next step that seemed to be congruent with what I was feeling uh, and I'm, I'm using feeling more than thinking of course they are in combination uh, but that's how I see it it's the next step and then the next step and then the next step it of course it helps to have some kind of uh, a direction to where to, you want to go but I don't think you, we're not in control really of where we will reach that or the circumstances of our life will change that for us. So I think 
the the purpose or the fulfillment all this will be found by the next thing and then the next thing and keeping on it is it is a journey it's not one point one destination that you i can say okay now i'm fulfilled it's it's it, it is it is ongoing it's like going to the gym you can't exercise once and be fit for life you have to carry on the moment you stop and you go back on yourself the fulfillment goes away if you start doing things that do not um are not aligned with you know your true self who you truly are what you what it is that you truly want to do and be and uh, share I think about, you said something about control and I, I believe this, you can control all of your actions every single day, but you cannot control the outcome of those actions. And it's, it's this weird juxtaposition because I, I believe that like, I'm going to accomplish every goal in my life. I believe that like I really do. And so I move that way every day, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. But I also go, well, that's not going to stop me. And so I keep moving forward. And I think that's really important. You mentioned something about feeling, mm. feeling like you're doing this thing. And, and as Tony being one of my mentors as well, and hearing him go, if you're in your head, you're dead. I, I love that so much because it's true. I talk about all the time on this show that your brain is only about survival. It is not about thriving. It does not care. So how do you, how did you start to tap into your, your emotions, your feelings about the, the choices and decisions that you were making to use those as anchors and leverage points to, to start to have the momentum in this journey? Thank you for asking. It's actually, I think in many ways, I think I was very blessed, uh, because when I was in the university, studying dentistry in Greece a long time ago, and my best friend at that time, who was standing as well, felt a very strong calling inside of him, a spiritual calling. And uh, eventually he dropped out of dental school and went to Siberia and became a shaman. And then he was traveling around the world. And seeing that and interacting with him once he started his uh, spiritual journey made me very much more open to all those things that my mind or the mind generally can't explain so i was blessed in in such um, in such a way that i had this influence of what it is to to feel your intuition or to to be in your heart so that is like the, let's say, the foundation in a way that allowed me uh, to do that. But if I move it further on, the feeling versus thinking for me has a very different um, vibration or a very different uh, color, if, if you want. What, what the feeling is something that even thinking about it makes you smile it's something that even now my my hands kind of uh, without wanting i do this motion up going upwards it's like something is emerging or uh, flowering inside of you something uh, beautiful it doesn't matter if it's scary or not or if the mind will say that it's scary but it is something coming from inside going upwards and it for me the big characteristic that it has is that it makes me smile so i know that something is coming from my intuition my my heart because it makes me feel good if it's coming the other way around from my head it's usually when it's uh, fearful it's the what if is the let's look at it logically and who are you to do this these are the, it's it's completely opposite and i know it's very very convincing and many of us or most of us use that instead of the the intuition but it's really not going to lead to fulfillment it, it's going to lead to survival to safety to let's do what we know of doing because anything outside of that it's a, a risk it's a danger and uh, but yeah, it's it's that that feeling of um, joy, of that smiling that comes, no matter what the message is. That's how, that's how I I know that it's coming 
from uh, a deeper part of me and not my my brain. We'll be right back, but I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about the Think Unbroken six-week trauma healing coaching program. If you go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com, you can sign up for the six-week daily Think Unbroken Trauma Healing Coaching Program. In this program, we're going to go over the six principles of healing trauma, adaptation, understanding the impacts of trauma, how to become the hero of your own story, what to do next, and ultimately what it means to be unbroken. For more information about this six-week coaching program, which you can download as an app on your phone and take with you everywhere, no matter where you are in the world, it's interactive, it's built about giving you practical tools that you can use in real time. And if you're ready for what's next in your life, go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Again, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Now let's get back to the show. That's that's a really beautiful way to phrase that. I mean, and I think about energy in that too, right? I mean, if if you're operating through this scope of you know, woe is me or sorrow or the things that you're doing are feeling burdensome, you're you're not going to want to do them. You're not mm-hmm. going to have the energy, the effort, the the passion, even though I'm going to use that word, um, to want to accomplish life, to have the goals, to be the person that you're capable of being. And I, I think there's so much validity and just recognizing how inside your body you feel in that moment as you're doing things. And I think often we're so disconnected from that was there how do i want to phrase this because i want to make this to be valuable for people when you were in this process of starting to shift into operating through feeling Mm -hmm. outside of just simply like noticing am i smiling is there joy were there certain things that you were pushing yourself into to do in order to have that response was there kind of a pendulum swing from, okay, I'm going to do this even though it's painful, but it makes me feel good about myself? Like, what was the process of really being able from an actionable standpoint to step into those things? Yeah. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind was the fact that I was discontent where I was. I was, I was not happy where I was. So that on its own is a very good motivator to to take some uh, uncomfortable action. Uh, For me, it was, um, there is an element, and it's not easy to describe it, but it is an element of belief or trust, or I will reluctantly use the word faith, because uh, for some people it might uh, have a different connotation. But let's say belief and trust that this is the right thing uh, to do. So that combined to the the pain of the situation that I was in uh, uh, propelled me to to action. I did uh, take the uncomfortable action knowing that A, I was not well where I was there. I had realized I was unhappy. I was, you know, I was drinking too much. I was smoking at that time. I was was leading a road to uh, bad outcomes. Uh, So I knew I I needed to change. So I had this inspired idea. It was scary as as hell, leaving everything I knew and going to another country on my own. But having the, um, the belief that this is right, because otherwise I wouldn't be stuck here where I am and I'm only going to go even down, more down, uh, motivated, really, to motivated me to take the action. And I, w- I found out that once I started doing, taking these kinds of actions that were coming from my intuition, I had support, shall we say, or there were things happening that were helping me people coming my way or conversations having, you know, the synchronicities. Uh, so it um, facilitated the process. But yes, of course, the, the fear was there. The fact that I had to battle with that uh, voice was there. And I think that's, 
something we we need to do. I don't think it ever goes away, does it? It's always there, and you have to keep on uh, ignoring it or uh, letting it uh, say what it has to say. But you're doing what you have to do in spite of that voice. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes even like I will go into the dark parts of myself <laughs> in the moments of which I'm like, I don't want to do that thing because mm -hmm. I need something to pull me through. Mm -hmm. Right. And and there's there's these moments because like it is about feeling an emotion. And then I would tell people to tread lightly with stepping into the darkness because that can overtake you. But I, I have these moments, Agi, where I am looking at this thing that I need to do or accomplish. And it's midnight. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's a Sunday at one in the afternoon. You know, it's, it doesn't matter when it is. But there's this moment that comes where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Mm. And I remind myself, I'm tired. I'm lethargic. I, you know, the, it's it's chaotic, and I I start to get into that dark space where that dark space is actually negative in a way that's pulling me down. And what's interesting is in that moment, I'm it's like battling dark against dark, which I know is a weird narrative. But I go, every motherfucker who ever told you you weren't gonna be shit is waiting for you not to do anything right now, and that is a feeling also that I pull out because I think just as much as you can pull into the light side of things, right? And I don't know if you have this experience too, but I'm really curious as much as you can pull into the light and the joy and the happiness, like I really truly believe this. And this is me. And I don't know if you'll agree, but I really truly believe sometimes you got to kick your own fucking ass and be like, go to work. Cause these motherfuckers are waiting for you to fail. Absolutely. Uh, I, what I, I believe is that each of us will find different things that motivate them. So I'm, I'm not sure if there is one universal motivator. Uh, for different people, it could be a different thing. Uh, but certainly proving <laughs> something to yourself and to others, and maybe to yourself even more, is, uh, is a great uh, motivator to get your ass up and do those things that uh, you want to do despite the fear, despite if you're not feeling like it or uh, or anything else. But I think, <laughs> you know, thinking about it, the way you asked me the question, I think it, each of us will find uh, slightly different things that will really motivate them when it's really difficult and you can't uh, break through. And that's probably related to their own background and what it is that the reason why they want to step on the other side and, and all those things. I think it's, I, uh, it could vary. Absolutely. And, and that's why I don't think there's a right or wrong here. And that's why mm. I also said tread lightly with the darkness because it can take <laughs> you to the wrong place if you're not paying attention. One of the things I'm curious about here is, you know, looking at the trajectory of, of your life and, all, and going back to talking about these steps and these actions and just kind of the continuation of the moving forward, I think one of the things, unfortunately, that I see happen so very commonly is that people will say, I'm setting this goal mm -hmm. and it's a big goal. And I'm all about setting the big goal. Set the goal bigger than you even think you can set it right now. Go hard, right? And and they'll go day one, day two. Uh, all right, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, I'll get back to it. Oh, well, there's things. Life is happening. Blah, kids, family, blah, 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 right? How do you continue the momentum? Because I, I feel like those are, if I were to pinpoint the number one way that people let themselves down, it's by giving up on their dreams because it got too difficult. Mm -hmm. how, how have you been able to either cultivate momentum or build momentum or you know, even in those moments, like, like what is the process for that? Because I, I see the transition and the trajectory of your life. It obviously didn't happen overnight. I'm sure you're probably nowhere close to where you're trying to go and what's next, but how do you, how do you continue to have that carry through to push you towards what you want to accomplish? Yes. So first of all, with when you have a, a very big goal, as you mentioned, and you have set that, uh, if you just leave it like that and then try to take the next little step in order to reach there, that's probably not 
going to work. For me, it wouldn't work like that. I would need to kind of reverse engineer that goal and see if that is really what I want. Where need do I need to be in a year's time from now, for example, to reach that, or in six months or in three months or next week? So chunking it down into smaller things really helps with with the momentum because you have a more clear direction and it's broken down. And you know that if I have completed this chunk of the goal over this month, then I know that my next one is this and and uh, and so on. If I can give you an example, I, I ran the, the London Marathon a few months ago and that was the first time I ran a marathon. If I started just by thinking, how will I run those 26 miles? The motivation would be very <laughs> difficult to maintain. I, But I had broken it down uh, reversely into, I need to do this a month before, to be able to do this a month before, this two months before. So I was working towards smaller goals or interim uh, goals, which are much more... Uh, achievable so doing like uh, 10 10 kilometers as uh, is a much more approachable and uh, goal than saying i'm going to do the the marathon yes you will do the marathon eventually but you have to build yourself uh, up to this so i think that is the key to momentum to one of the keys there are many but that is one of the keys to have smaller sub goals that will lead to that big goal and uh, rather than looking at the very end of what you are um, wanting to achieve look a little bit closer what is my next step especially when on those days when you really don't feel like you want to practice or work or run or get out of bed or uh, that's really the time that uh, it it has uh, helped me to keep up the momentum and if one other thing that comes to mind as uh, an action if you want because momentum is very easy to uh, lose it's it's pretty much a daily process but if for any reason because things will happen and life will happen you get out of the momentum and you don't do what you wanted to do for one day, make sure 100% that there won't be a second day that uh, you'll, you will not do the actions that you have set yourself to do. Uh, because if it's easier, it's, uh, you know, get back on the horse as soon as you can. At the moment that two, three, four days pass, then it's, you might as well start over because your momentum will have dropped to zero. I don't know if, if you agree with that, but uh, for me, these are things that I personally do and they have helped me to maintain the momentum. And, you know, after a point, it just goes on. Uh, when you pick enough, it goes faster and faster. You don't really need to do that much effort. Yeah, a- absolutely. And, you know, I, I think that, chunking out goals is such an important part of the experience because you know people ask me all the time well how have you written so many books how do you have podcasts and stuff like that i'm like i started at zero i started at one word on one page every single day and then what happened was i just started looking at okay what what is the time frame on this goal right some things have a time frame some things don't it really just depends you've got to figure that out but the one thing i made the decision about was every single day it's going to get my energy Every single day, it's going to get my effort. And and that meant every day. And when I wrote my first book, it literally was every day for months and months, writing, reading, rewriting, editing, learning how to publish, like the whole nine. And then that that's held true in other things. And right now I'm in the midst of some really big goals that require daily energy. And Grant Cardone, who was one of my mentors, who I'm super fortunate to have in my life, He told me one time, he was like, look, man, if you want to have something, you're going to have to give something up. Hmm. And that just, I think about that against everything that I want to accomplish in my life. Am I going to have to give up Netflix? Am I going to have to give up going to the bar with friends? Am I going to have to give up an identity about what I'm worth? 
Am I going to have to give up a past that is hindering me from my future? And so there, there's so much to this idea, but you know, these goals, this identity, this, this life you want to create, like it's right here for you right? It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tedious. Like I promise you, it's probably more tedious than it is enthralling, right? But those, those moments where you hit these massive accomplishments, and I'll, I'll say this for certain, there's about 6.2 seconds of pure bliss. <laughs> and then you go into the next thing, right? How, how did you feel when you crossed the finish line at the marathon? <laughs> well, the the accomplishment, the sense of accomplishment was uh, incredible. I burst into tears when I finished because I, um, there were tears of gratitude, really, that I was able to experience that uh, all the thing. It's uh, in terms of uh, what you say about the six uh, seconds, it probably lasted me a little bit longer than, than that. But uh, certainly, yeah, of course, it's. I think it's in our human nature to then look look for what's next. Otherwise, uh, it's what we were saying earlier. It's not like you reach it and you say, "Now I have, I am successful." Period, and now I can uh, sit down and uh, you know watch Netflix all day and do nothing. It's, it's not like that. Um, there will be the next thing, and uh, that's it. Might it's as you said, it's not easy, or it might not be easy, but it's that's what makes things meaningful. Easy and meaningful are rarely uh, on the same sentence. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, and again, like, please, like, I, people will always misconstrue things that are said. We're not talking about like, don't enjoy your life. You want to watch Netflix? Fine, do it. Like, who cares? That's not the point. The point is like, are you heading in direction? Are you trying to make betterment of your life? Because I promise you, there's going to be moments where I'm, I'm going to play video games all day. It's going to happen because I need it, because it's a disconnect, because it's a part mm. of my experience. But I also say, if I committed myself to this thing, I got to do it before I can play video games. I got to do it before I can go to dinner with my friends. Sometimes I'm late, man. They're like, dude, you're an hour late. I'm like, I had to do the thing because my commitment to me always comes first because you've probably experienced this. You'll be at the dinner, at the bar, at the event, at the thing. And the only yoga class, you are like, the only thing you're thinking about is the thing you didn't do yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you got to be able to do that thing and hold yourself accountable Augie, my friend, th this conversation has been absolutely incredible. Thank you for being here. Um, before I ask you my last question, can you yes. tell everyone where they can find you? Absolutely, yes. Uh, well, my my podcast is, uh, I would invite people that uh, enjoyed this conversation to listen to the podcast, Personal Development Mastery, which you can uh, find uh, everywhere on Apple, Spotify, and so and so on. Amazing. And of course, we'll put the links in the show notes and all of those things. My friend, my last question for you is what does it mean to you to be unbroken? I would say um, to be myself, to be who I truly am. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, word, unbroken. But for me, it implies that Something that is uh, true inside of you is lost or is broken. So being unbroken is really not having uh, pieces inside you that don't belong to who you truly are. So yeah, being your true self in, in every sense of the word. I love it, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Unbroken Nation, thank you for listening. Please, of course, like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see ya. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that on Broken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, 
comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.